Hey there, good morning everybody. That looks a little loud. How's the sound sound this morning? Is that a little bit loud? Let me see if I can doctor that up a little bit. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where we get together every morning and talk about awesomeness. Uh, you being awesome, us being awesome, we'll just be awesome together. How about that? That looks like that might be just a little bit better. Let's hop back over there and see. Oh, yes, that's so much better. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, whether you're watching live or, on the, or watching on the replay, drop a little comment down below. I know you're going to want to keep up with the conversation that's going to ensue today. As my uh, my title for today's show might have hinted, well, I don't know if it hinted anything, but at least it, it was a title, Risk Junkies. Yesterday we were talking about opportunity and how opportunity without risk is just a gift. Um, and gifts are good. Gifts are good. We like to get gifts every once in a while. But the real reward and the real payoff right, comes in accomplishing something. And so that's kind of where we're going this week, talking about opportunity and risk. Hey, listen, if you are listening on your favorite podcast catcher, you can join the show live every morning, 7 a.m. on Facebook. Just go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That gets you to the right place. Like that page, follow that page, and you'll get a notification every morning I go live. And if you're watching live, it might be easier for you to listen to the replay. They get published about 30 minutes after the show's finished uh, on all your favorite podcast outlets. All right, so a couple of quick good mornings. Hey there, Joe, Jeremy, Keith. Thanks to you guys for being here. So yesterday we talked about opportunity and how real opportunity has risk associated with it. That we've gotten, we've, we've started talking about um, risk, uh, not risk, we started talking about opportunity as though it uh, comes with some kind of guaranteed outcome. And that's just not true. I mean, opportunity, real opportunity, has some risk associated with it. So, now let's talk about the flip side of that, right? And I have a quote. Uh, actually, there's two great quotes. I'll go with, uh, let's go with baseball today. Baseball will be our quote today. This one's from Babe Ruth. Don't let the fear of striking out hold you back. Don't let the fear of striking out hold you back. What happens so often and when we talk about risk, especially for those people who are just starting something new or trying to grow something that's relatively stable, right? Kind of break out of your status quo, you get this aversion to risk. Now, a lot of people would say that entrepreneurs are risk junkies, hence the title this morning. But actually, I think it's kind of the opposite of that. That a, a good, uh, you know I don't like serial entrepreneur as a title, but, but people that are able to take those risks, to start businesses, to go out on their own and do things, they're not, they're not risk junkies. They're actually risk averse also. And they're not, um, they just don't let the risk hold them back. Right? It's not that they, so much, it's not so much that they enjoy the risk, rather they are comfortable operating in the risk. There's, there's a good way to explain it. Um, they understand the risks, they've taken steps to mitigate the potential downsides, and they move forward anyway. So back to our quote, don't let the fear of striking out um, hold you back. A lot of people who either want to start a business or want to grow their existing business get held back by this idea that, well, that's risky. Well, what if I fail? Well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it doesn't work? Let's just say for, for a few minutes, let's think through this. You have an existing business, a going concern. You're thinking that you would like to grow the business, but you're just not sure. It's kind of risky. Uh, maybe you're getting into a field that's not exactly your sweet spot. You know, you're taking on one of those adjacent markets. I don't know. I, you know, it's that's that's kind of a tough decision. The next day, a tornado comes through and wipes out your business. Right? It's an empty slab now. Now, what are you going to do? I mean, 
as much as we want to say that we can mitigate these risks, that I can get answers to all of these questions before I start so I know what's going to happen, I can predict the outcome, we can't really predict the outcome. We can have a pretty good idea and we can head in the right direction and we can keep making adjustments that move us closer and closer to that goal. But the outcome itself, I, I used to have a, uh, <laughs> used to have a boss that, that uh, would say, I'll give you a 100% accurate estimate of when we're going to be complete the day after we finish. Right? And not even the day we finish, the day after we finish. Because his point was, you never know. You never know for sure, with 100% certainty, what's going to happen until you're not predicting anymore, but you're reading the future, or reading history, rather. All right? So, when we talk about risk, when we're thinking about risk and opportunity, if you see an opportunity, yes, consider the risks. What's going on? What, what could go wrong? Right? Don't dwell there. Just be objective. What could go wrong if I execute, if I move on this opportunity? And when you do that, you have to give equal time to what could go right. Yes, these things might go wrong. If, if something doesn't uh, work out the way I expect, these are the possible consequences. And if things do work out the way that I expect, these are the possible consequences. So then when you've got your worst case scenario and your best case scenario, then what's your most likely scenario? Right? So you've got the worst case over here, you've got the best case over here. Now, out of all of that, you're probably not going to get the worst case outcome, you're probably not going to get the best case outcome. What's the most likely outcome? And if that most likely outcome is moving you toward that goal that you set for yourself, then you've got a good opportunity to pursue. All right, so, wow, lots of comments rolling up there. Let me get the old cheater here, the old iPad, so that I can see them. <coughs> you know, the comments, I have to admit, the comments are one of the parts of this show that I enjoy the most. Seeing what you guys think, hearing what you say, um, what your thoughts are yeah, on our topic comments. of the day. Let's turn that down so we don't have to listen to it again. Yeah, so uh, Vicky says, reminds me, like our oldest daughter used to play softball. And she'd be up there at the plate. Oh, man, I don't know how many times. I, I coached or helped coach her team from the time she was four or five years old till she started high school. And uh, so many times her or one of the other girls would be up at the plate and watch, you know, three strikes come by. And they're out. I said, well, why, why didn't you swing at one of those? Well, I, I didn't think I could hit them. I was like, well, I can guarantee you won't hit them if you don't swing at them. Right? The only way to guarantee you're never going to hit the ball is to never swing the bat. So don't get caught not swinging the bat. Right? Is, is there a risk you're going to get a strike? Sure. You know, Babe Ruth struck out way more times than he hit home runs. Ted Williams, best batter ever. Right, only got on base four out of six times. Well, not on base, got a hit four out of six times that he went to bat. That means that six out. No, I'm sorry, four out of ten. Six out of ten times he went to bat, he got out. But he's still the best hitter ever. How does that work? I don't know. Adrenaline junkies consider risk excitement, which pushes the envelope for most. However, if you manipulate fear, then you can achieve far beyond expectations, which becomes a habit and experience. All right. So that's Joe. Thank you for that, Joe. I think there's a difference between adrenaline junkies and risk junkies. And adrenaline junkies literally are junkies to the adrenaline, to the chemicals that get dumped in their body when they're doing something risky and challenging. Dare I say even stupid, right? Um, they're not, I, I don't, I don't consider that the same as, uh, the entrepreneur, the business owner, the business leader that takes measured chances, measured risks to start or grow a business. I mean, and, and the, the whole point I'm trying to make with the adrenaline junkie analogy, right, is that 
I'm not adrenaline. Oh, man. Clearly not had enough of my coffee yet this morning. The risk junkie analogy, right, is that a lot of people look at what we do and think, hey, it's just a risk junkie. And they're dismissive. I could never do that. I don't have that kind of tolerance for risk. Well, we don't have a great tolerance for risk either. We're smart about the risks that we take. Whereas adrenaline jun junkies might not always be so smart in the risks that they take. So Joe says this brings up the question, if you have passion, then the risks often are not considered to the fullest extent. So it does. Let me ask this question. <laughs> and this, oh, I can't do that. I'm saving that for tomorrow. I don't know, maybe we'll talk a little bit about it. I'll, I'll go ahead and seed your thought for tomorrow and you can be thinking of the answer. Risk of what? When we talk about risk, right? Oh man, there's, there's so much risk associated with, with uh, you know, growing my business, adding a new warehouse, adding a new city, starting something, you know, a lot of risk. Risk of what? That's all I'm going to say about it. You think about it. Be back here tomorrow, we'll talk about it. That's our topic for tomorrow, risk of what? I'll have to make sure I remember that for the title for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your questions, comments, and input. That is a fun part of the show, I have to admit, being able to uh, to read what you guys say and uh, what your th thoughts are. Thank you so much for sharing that. If you know someone, business owner, leader, or entrepreneur, who can benefit from our conversations here every morning, please do me a favor. Leave a comment down below and tag them in it or click the share button, put this in their feed so they can see it. They can join us in the conversation tomorrow as we talk uh, about risk of what. And we continue this idea, this theme through the week about opportunity and risk. I think this is really good stuff and hopefully you do too. If you do, give me a thumbs up on that video. I appreciate those just as much as I appreciate the comments. It is Tuesday. That's radio show today. It is pre-recorded, but it will roll at the regular time today. So be sure and tune in for that. And I'll be back here again tomorrow with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Till then, you take care.